Okay, good morning, everyone. I uh, introduce myself a little bit. My original name is Simin Tom, uh, but uh, usually people call me Sam or Samuel Tom. Uh, I originally from Taiwan, and then I went to the United States and get a master's degree, and then I start working. And uh, after working at a relatively small hospital, I went down to Texas. Uh, that's the UTMD Anderson Cancer Center. And uh, there I started working there 1989. Ever since then, I, was in, I have been in the United States, in Texas, for almost 30 years. 30 years. Right now, I'm uh, the, the section chief for the head and neck section. We also cover... Okay, in Eminison, uh, we have a different services, you know, an, a, according to the anatomical site. So I'm uh, the section chief for medical physics for the head and neck, melanoma, lymphoma, and the sarcoma services. Uh, we have uh, the most things I've been do doing is like a, do the treatment plan for the head and neck services, and uh, sometimes by request I do the plan for lymphoma. Most of the plan is actually done by the, we call the dosimetrist. They will run the treatment plan. And then we physicists basically just check, review what the treatment plan can be improved or we approve before the treatment begins. Um, at MDS it's a little bit different. The setup is a little bit different because we have a different specialty. So we just do whatever you ask to do. So most of the things, because we have set up this comprehensive quality assurance program, so everyone can do their own part and will be respected by the management team so that they know you spend the time, spend the effort, meaning you, the hospital spend the money for this effort. They think it is worth while. They, think they, they would like to spend the money. So this is very important, continue from the last uh, talk. You have to get respect for what you are doing so that people know what you are doing. In order to get the respect, you have to make sure you do a good job. Okay, you need to somehow convince <coughs> the management team, convince this we call the CFO or CEO or your department chairman, this uh, team leader, so that they know what you are doing is very important things for your department, for your treatment for your services. Otherwise, most of the time, medical physicists doing the things we call the behind the scene. People will think nothing to do with the patient because when patient complain, they complain to nurse, complain to radiation, we call the therapist, okay, but here I know it's called a technician. Or they complain to the uh, radiation oncologist, here maybe called the therapist, so that they have this patient interaction, which is very important. However, most of the time, medical physicists never have a chance to interact with patients. And these top layer people think, oh, this is wasting money. Unfortunately, most of the time, when you are medical physicists, in this management team, you usually is called like a quality officer. This quality officer, just like we said, sometimes you become a police. Do you like the police? <laughs> and if, if everything's fine, it's, it's okay. But when you have like a speeding, you give your ticket, is that right? So you have something wrong, people say, oh, I got you wrong. Sometimes medical physics work as like a quality officer, just like the police. Nobody wants to get a ticket. But the point is when you have an external audit, people come over here, uh, people will say, you didn't do a good job. They, then the personal audit give you the, the hospital problem. See what I'm saying? Say your hospital never have a quality program, so you cannot treat certain amount of patient or give you lower, we call that reimbursement rate, give you lower money, so that maybe even close down your hospital. And then who's going to plan? The time management team said, you did a good job. 
But then you say, I keep talking to you, you need to do this, you need to do that. Then you write me a ticket, I don't want to do anything, I don't want to listen to you. See what I'm saying? You are in this between, you are in trouble. So most important thing is you need to develop this from the top layer down to the lower level. Okay, the, the, the talk I'm going to give is actually you are doing this every day. You need to do this. You need to do a very good job. You need to convince the team that you can do the good job and do a reasonable job so that you will be the part of this whole team and then that people respect you and the people like to do what you do and you think you, what you do is important for the hospital. If you just focus doing what I'm going to talk, nobody knows what you are doing and when something wrong, you say, oh, you need to do this and then you are not going to be successful. You're going to have a more problem, okay? Maybe it's going to have a long time before you can reach this step, but you need to pay attention, okay? You need to keep the focus of this whole program. This is the foundation for what I'm going to talk, okay? I'm just trying to respond, okay? Um, depends on how your foundation, how solid your foundation, how broad or how deep your foundation before you can build up the program. So this we call the quality control program, meaning Meaning, this is what you're going to do every day. But this quality control program has to be under this we call the comprehensive quality assurance program that you get the support to do these things. Because you're going to spend your time and effort to do this. But this is what you're going to do every day. Okay? People have to respect and to know what you're doing. This is just quick reset. So this is what I'm going to do is to, I'm going to use a lot of talk from Dr. Hartman too also because for this continuity, I realize, I think he probably gave the talk for the last time or something. He has a very good uh, comprehensive program. You can go uh, yourself and uh, to get from, from him. I basically just summarize this, okay, so that you will know how to generate this program based on uh, this talk, okay, some uh, procedure. And most likely you're going to develop your own procedures in your own department, okay? Depends on what you have to develop your own. This just gives you an example, okay? Okay, a lot of the uh, reference is talking about already, okay? Uh, the, the new reference we call the task group 142, I'm talking about United States uh, uh, program, okay? By the way, this all keep changing, keep Get, getting more. See, for I first practice, I used task group 40. Now we use task 142. And going to have a new one, a new one. You need to, this just give you the instruct inter, introductions. And that when you practice, you're going to have a, a new protocol or new material come out. You have to keep update for that, okay? Not just this is original. Like, first, when I do the absolute calibration, we use SCRAD protocol. And then we have a, uh, the, TG20, uh, and then we have a TG41. Even this calibration protocol keep changing. You need to keep update yourself, okay? And same thing for the quality assurance program. A lot of things I'm going to do is come from this book and based on the, the talk of Dr. Harmon, okay? So this is continue of the other book, okay? So I'm going to talk about four parts, okay? For this setup, this like a kind of uh, quality control, quality assurance program, this including this many four parts. We are starting talking about when you get like a linear oscillator, when you get a linear, what are you going to do? Okay, this is important thing. Or maybe when you get a cobalt 60 unit, or you get a also voltage, this is a new unit, how are you going to do? Okay, what are you going to do? So you need to do, uh, check your what you're going to set up the program to get the, what kind of the test, we call the quality control test. And then it's uh, something, other things you need to do. And uh, this is the four part, okay? And then some uh, PM, we call the preventive maintenance. So I'm going to talk about these four things, okay? These four subjects. Okay, first I'm talking about the initial specification, acceptance testing, and the commissioning, meaning when you buy a machine, usually the people who pay the money, usually the hospital or institution or CFO, we call the chief financial officer, or maybe the doctors, the radiation oncologists, 
they were they have some relationship with some company manufacturer they just buy this machine okay but before they get this we call the purchase order we should have this we call the initial specification to do okay we should do some uh, site visit meaning we need to go to the manufacturer site when they fabric uh, this knee neck you need to make sure this knee neck is somehow meet your spec before they ship out to your institution okay unless this has been established the model if it is like a new model for any other side they always get they always get some uh, new type of the machine so that we often go to the site to make sure this is like a manufactured based on what we specify. But if you just buy like a commercially available um, standard model, you don't have to go to site visit, okay? But it is recommend, okay? Also, when the machine shipped to your institution, they're going to install the machine. After, right after installation, they usually have this we call the cookbook, meaning they have this acceptance procedure. You need to check one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. Make sure the machine that you received, you have, is follow this procedure so that you can accept this machine. Sometimes if you have a specialized machine, then you have to write your own acceptance procedure, how to accept this machine, okay? And then after you accept this machine, meaning they meet the, your spec, and then you need to commission it. Commission meaning you make this machine available, ready uh, for clinical use. Okay, you need to generate more table, more information for the for the people to use this machine, you know, safely and then effectively. Okay, so I'm going to say a little bit. Okay, so when we're talking about the equipment. We need to do this equipment selection, meaning you need to specify what kind of equipment, what kind of this machine you want to perform, okay? Just like if you buy a maybe car, you want the red one or blue one or white one, you need to specify. It's not going to the, to the, to the car shop and say, okay, whatever you have, give to me, okay? You need to buy something that you need for your clinic, okay? So that's why you need to use this concept to generate this multidisciplinary team so that everyone get involved, okay? This work talking about the equipment operation, your facility, your performance, your service. This is what get everybody involved so that this is what we want to buy. Of course, many decision is made by the hospital, many de uh, decision made by the radiation oncologist. But as a medical physicist, you need to give your voice to say what's the good part for this machine, what's the bad part for this machine. So that before you buy it, you, they need to know what's the difference between different machines. Okay. See what I'm saying? Whether you want to buy, I don't know how we call it, Electra or Varian, or you want to do like a cyber knife, or you want to do gamma knife, or you want to do do like a stereotactic or different different way treatment. What's the best? What's the uh, good? So that they will make the right decision for the department, and that you need to provide professional uh, opinion for them. Okay, so this is very important. You should be the part of this team. Medical physicists should be the part of this team to select which machine to buy. Okay, so you need to make connection. You need to build up the, this relationship with your management team. You need to be a team player, okay? Uh, this is all the question you need to ask, how to relate, how to select the machine, okay? Like uh, how to use the new technology, uh, how, how many uh, treatment you're going to provide, all this you need to answer. This is all relevant to select a proper, appropriate machine for your department. This is part of a quality assurance program. It's not after the machine come over here, after this 
People say, oh, this is not good. Okay, recently, MD Anderson purchased a Versa machine, Electra Versa machine. After we got it, okay, and the physician complained, this uh, portal image quality is not as good as before. And then we go back to manufacturer. Manufacturer, this is the best I can get. And guess what? Everybody has to suffer because we accept, we commissioned, we buy this machine already. You see what I'm saying? The physicians say, oh, we have least good parts, so I want to buy versa machine. But then when we actually use it, and they realize it's some important things, even though at the beginning we, saw, we don't think that important, but later on becomes very important. A lot of these last small things, because we are in this uh, learning curve, okay? This is like a brand new machine for us. So we have to make a lot of things, like sometimes we always get this uh, readings during the treatment, we call the optical distance indicator. We need to get this part of our treatment quality assurance. We have to get this reading once every week. But then for versa machine, for the treatment technologies to read this number, they are, they are having a hard time. They cannot get this reading. Everybody say, what are we going to do? So eventually we made a device <coughs> for the people. They can make this measurement every day. But before we buy this machine, we didn't know we have this problem. See what I'm saying? So we spend a lot of effort to solve this kind of problem. So we stay in the learning curve, okay, because this is like a brand new machine. But this is the problem. Some I can solve, but something we cannot solve. Just like image quality, the manufacturer say, this is the best I can get, and this is what we specify in our specification, and this is what we buy according to your specification. And what do you complain for? See what I'm saying? No reason to complain. Just like you buy a blue card, then you complain and say, I want to buy the red card at the beginning. So, but you say you want blue card. It's too late. Okay, it's too late. Anyway, that's what I'm going to talk about. Then we need to basically discuss all this. To you need to get all this information, and then we compare with the manufacturer specification. Okay, you need to compare with the manufacturer. And you need to compare what's the best you can do from the public. You need to discuss with all other users. We did discuss this Versa machine with other users. We went to another state, went to Louisiana. And the people talk to me, they have this problem, how to solve this problem. They have this new, uh, the problem usually related to a multi-leaf collimator, MLCs. So we decided we don't buy that one, we buy the new one. Anyway, so we buy the Versa. But still, so you get some information from other users. So before you buy, you, you can talk to other people. So you know other people different from different countries, from different institutions. You can ask around, see what kind of the problem you have, what's good thing for this. Okay, so you can, you can get this. To generate this, we call the spec, okay, specification. Okay, and then this specification has to be write it down in a number, it's not just say, oh, you have a high quality. You need to say, what kind of this quantity you can measure to reflect this quality, okay? So this to, has to be measurable, okay? Write down some numbers, okay? You need to generate this. This usually, you can get from uh, what we call this uh, manufacturer specification, the, what we call the sales people, they give you brochure, see this is what you can do. Usually, whatever specified in the brochure is the manufacturer, they are comfortable to achieve the goal. Like if they think they can make this one millimeter in the brochure, they will say two millimeter, see what I'm saying? But if you want to buy a good one, some of you need to just specify one millimeter, make sure they do a good job. Because when they feel comfortable, they may make me a little bit uh, deterioration or maybe not quite good. So instead of one millimeter, they do like 1.5 millimeter. But since the brochure specified two millimeter, you get a machine 1.5 millimeter, you still have to accept it. Normally, normally, okay, if the manufacturer can make this comfortable, like a, to meet the specification, they usually double the number. 
So if you want to for this, like if you do stereo tactic or some machine, you want to make sure you have the good one, then you need to write your own number in there. You understand? Okay. And then after the decision make this, then this has to be made by all the person. So for the virtual machine, a lot of physicians, a lot of people complain after we buy it, after we clinical use. So the management team has to write an email, write a memo to everyone saying, okay, originally this machine has been decided by this, this, this people, meaning you have this like a, a engineer, you have a medical physicist, you have a, a physician, you have everyone agree this one going to buy, and before we buy, we went to Louisiana, we checked the machine, blah, blah, blah. so the management team said we did this according to all this. Now it's too late to change. <laughs> But basically, everybody has been involved. So management team try to, I don't know. <laughs> but this is important, OK? So before you get a machine. And then when you receive the machine, after the machine installed in your department, then you do a certain testing. A certain test equipment is a process which supplier needs to demonstrate the baseline performance of equipment is to the satisfaction of you. Okay, you are the customer. Okay, so you satisfy with this machine. Okay, so usually they have this what we call cookbook. Okay, this is like a standardized standardized test. You need to go this through with the installation team. Okay, so you do this, and sometimes. Uh, so after this new equipment is stored, okay, on my on your right, the equipment must be tested in order to assure that it meets the specification. That's why you specify that the environment free of radiation and then all this safety issue, okay? On your right. So the real quick essential improvements required and spec from the machines to be agreed upon before a seven test of equipment. Okay? Meaning if this doesn't meet your spec, you are in trouble, okay? They hold maybe 10% of the money, okay? So, also important is all this, sometimes for this particular machine doesn't really meet the spec. Then you have this wafer, we call it wafer. Then everybody has to agree. So this is where we're going to agree, this is what we're going to accept. If this is the case, then you need to write it down, okay? You need to write it down so that everybody agree. Sometimes you can have this like a, uh, we call it a supplement. Uh, sometimes we say, okay, because if you cannot meet our spec because this reason, they may, the hospital can hold manufacturing maybe 5% of the money. They, won't, they don't pay them. So I mean, usually when they install, they don't have the full amount. Okay, they can hold 10% to 5% of the money. So then this form has to be accepted by both parties, by the installation pin and by you or someone, okay? Uh, then after you accept the machine, you do commissioning. Commissioning is the process to prepare this uh, equipment, I'm talking about the NINAC, for clinical use. Okay, so usually there's a full characteristic of the performance. You need to make the measurement. Make sure you kind of expect what kind of the machine what kind of the treatment, what kind of usage for this particular machine that you make a different measurement, make sure the system is going to use. Like for Amy Anderson, when I first went down there, I was part of uh, electron team, elect electron dosimetry team. We are responsible for commissioning, and we make the measurement all the way for the electron cut out, the field size, all the way down to two by two. Field size is very small. I was asking why we need to make this measurement. We are never using this two by two, <laughs> small field for the for the electron. But for MNS, they do expect sometimes they do two by five. They still need the two by two for the output calculation anyway. So we need to make all this insert all the way down to two by two for all the cone. You know, for 10 by 10, for 15 by 15, for 25 by 25, all this cone, we have to make a cutoff of two by two to make the measurement, to make sure they are consistent for the commissioning, which is a very long process, okay? 
depends on, but most hospitals though, for the electron, they don't expect that kind of measure, that kind of a treatment that often. You don't have to make that kind of measurement. Basically, you make a measurement on the fly, meaning, meaning if every particular patient, you want to treat this particular cutout, you just measure for this particular patient because you don't have that many patients. You only have to treat this kind of patient maybe one or two times during this machine lifetime. So you don't have to do it at the beginning, you just do during the treatment, that's it. See what I'm saying? Yeah, so save your time, okay. So commissioning also includes this provision to prepare all this, how to use this machine, this protocol, this instruction, all this data book. All this has to make this available and ready for clinical use. This is called the commissioning process. Also including the training of this stuff, okay? Uh, give you an example, this is the COBOL unit I received uh, long time ago. This we call a COBOL A. This is a COBOL A machine. We, after we do the source replacement, okay? And then this is a, a concise the table. After we commission, this is what we give to them. This is called a decay table for the, for the this is a table actually for the therapies, we call therapies. Here called the technician. Technician, they do this uh, uh, monthly or weekly or daily check. They have to some uh, form to, to follow, okay? This is for them to double check. This is also for the physicists on the machine to do real quick treatment time. We have a program to run treatment time, but then physicists, when they sign off, they have to do quick, uh, we call the manual check, and this is concise the table for the, for the physicists to do the check. Basically, you, you specify most important things, how this dose rate measured, so that people, after I left, or whoever left, they can do the same measurement according to this uh, specification. And then you do the on the first day, and then you generate this decay table. This decay table has to be generated based on uh, what we call this uh, half life, correct? Uh, you use different half life. You have a different decay table, so you need to say where this come from, so people can double check if something's wrong. If you have a new number of the, because this decay table could be this half life could be changed during the process, okay? Right now, everybody knows COBOL 6 is very, very, the half-life is very accurate. But sometimes during my practice, the, the half-life has been changed once. See what I'm saying? Okay. So this is what the information, also this time correction. So basically, this is just kind of a table you generate for the commission. It's not for the same test. Okay, some test just measure the output to meet the spec on the first day. The manufacturer doesn't provide this to you. You have to do this yourself, okay? This just gives them. okay, and this is the commission report. We just said that we we received this uh, last year. We just received last year. So this is the after we received last year. This is commission report. This is the first one we received for the Versa machine. So we generate this. This is a table of content. Uh, this is the our team, my team member over here. Okay, this is the uh, team member. I'm the section chief. This uh, Dr. Gilling, he's our section or uh, the Clinical chief, he's responsible for all sections, okay? Then we generate this table. Uh, this is the section, this is called a commissioning report, okay? This is the table of content. It's too small to read, I know. But the, the point I want to make is you need to generate this comprehensive report, comprehensive data sheet for people to use this machine correctly, okay? So you need to, this is one of your important job during your practice. Usually you receive machine once every 10 to 15 years. You need to do this. If you are fortunately involved, uh, you can do this really quick so you can learn. Okay, a lot of people when they do this medical physicist, they don't know how to do this. Okay, you need, a, you need someone for you to do the first time. If you are only a physicist, you, you need to get information. You need to get help from some other people. If you are the junior physicist, you need to quickly learn this from senior physicists. You need to learn this. Okay, talking about the external audit, even though we are MD Anderson, we have a physicist. One of my team members checked the TG51, the absolute calibration, 
And then the doctor getting my clinical check asked me to double check. So I make another measurement. We agree. Still, we, the doctor getting asked, asked for all the new machines, not just for us, okay? We have this uh, outside audit, actually. MDNZ has uh, like outside data, we call it. Outreach profile, okay. This is also MDNZ, but this is called this new name. These people, okay, from Iraq, we call it Iraq. It's not TOD, you know, what is it called? OSD, it's a new detector, okay? So we measure the output to make sure what we specify is what we're going to measure. For this particular, they measure 0.99. Can you see this 0.99? 0.99, okay. We spell this 300 centigrade. They use their equipment, they use their reference, using their standard. The output, the absolute calibration they have, agree with what we have within 1%. We need this measurement done by other institution. We call that this part of the QA program, okay? By outside auditor, kind of outside people to determine. And this is the form they give to me. For each bin, though, we have a different machine, I mean, different bin. Modality, they have a photon, electron, we have a different energy, we have a six and 15. Each bin has at least one report from the beginning. And then every year, every year, we also have this, and then we keep the track. I didn't really show you. For all the, for each machine, we do TG51, meaning the absolute calibration during the annual, uh, this part of the QA program during our annual calibration, our annual check, we do, TLDs every year. This kind of redundant, is that right? Kind of waste a lot of time, waste a lot of money because you need to get money to, to do this. So you have to convince the department chairman, you have to convince the hospital to say this is important. Why this is important? If the radiation techno technician, the technologist, they make a mistake, what happened? For today's treatment, they make a mistake. So patient treatment today, quality is not good. Suffered, maybe underdose or overdose or treat the wrong side. See what I'm saying? But that's just for one treatment, correct? If a radiation therapist or radiation cards, we call radiation, the physician make a mistake, supposed to give a 70 grade for this whole treatment course, but this physician is not quite qualified. They specify 50 grade or 60 grade, not the 70 grade, who is suffering? The patient, throughout the four, all courses, no matter how good you are, no matter how careful, the radiation technicians set up the patient, give treatment every day, but this patient is not going to have a good treatment. Quality is suffering, but for this particular patient, correct? But the physicists, if we do the absolute calibration, TG51, if we do wrong, your calibration off by 5%, who is suffering? All the patients going to suffer, all your treatment. No matter how good your physician give the prescription, 70 grade, no good. No matter how careful the reading therapist set up every day, pull thin, check every day, no good, because your output is way up. So your job is very important, okay? Our job is very important. That's why we double check output and double check, okay? We do this. This is should be part of your comprehensive quality assurance program. Okay, now we do this our daily dirty job. We call the the things you do every day. Okay, you need to set up this quality control program. But again, let me uh, re-emphasize: all these programs you spend a lot of time, you spend a lot of effort, but the management team has to know, has to understand, or convinced. That the, the time you spend, the money they spend for this is important. So that your job is important. So that they know, okay? But then you have to do this in a, like a timely, like a quality fashion, okay? You need to do this, your job correct too, okay? Okay, this is all the parameters. What kind of parameters you want to set up? What kind of things to do? This you can find a lot of reference, like a, TG40 or TG142 or 
this European machine or your, you need to go back to your government, your regulations, okay, your, to set up this, okay, your own procedure, okay. Uh, this quality control program usually set up for different, we call the frequency, okay. We have what's called a daily or weekly check, we have this monthly check, we have this annual check. This is a different checks, okay. This is will be your, pro, your program. So I'm talking about this daily check now. I need to go fast. Okay, usually it's done by RTT, we call the therapist, uh, but here I think we call the technician, is that right? Or technologist, different kinds have a different way to say. Usually this just checking the safety, the warm-up procedure, that's a simple output check, and the safety check, and then, but this check has to be verified by medical physics, okay? And our regulation in the United States, this has to be reviewed within five days of treatment. You don't have to be there, but you establish this program, you establish baseline. They're just doing this every day, but then you have to review, at least within five treatments, okay, five days. And then you have a monthly check. This monthly check usually is done by physics people. When I say physics staff, could be, we call the physics assistant to help you. But I think when you go back, this probably mostly done by yourself, okay? Or your, your physics team, okay? Then you use a different type of uh, equipment, different type of setup. When I say different, it's different from daily or, or different from weekly. So this kind of like a double check, okay? So that you check the system that maybe one system failure, you can double check. And then we do annual check, but when I say annual check, usually we like to say annual calibration because no matter how you do monthly or how you do weekly, this could be related to we call the TG51 calibration, this absolute dose calibration. But in your annual check, you have to do exactly follow this absolute calibration to, 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 to do the checks during your annual check. So we usually call annual calibration. And this annual calibration, since we need going to do this, we call the absolute dose calibration. So this has to be done by quali qualified medical physics. Okay, qualified medical physics here, qualified medical. So we usually call this annual calibration. Okay, you need to set up this program for people to follow. Okay, give you maybe. Okay, the most important is why we set up this program, we did at the beginning at the symptom testing, is that right? Everything has been checked. But we want to make sure this at the beginning we check this has to be consistent throughout throughout this machine life. Okay, during all the treatment. That's that's usually sometimes we call it that's why we call the consistency check. Consistent check. Okay? Make sure this has been consistent. That's why even for the cobalt 60, you accept at the beginning. You generate the decay table, you need to verify it is cobalt 60, it is decay, that's like 5.26 years, okay? So you double check, it's not say, oh, this is cobalt, so it should follow this, but maybe they have impurity in there. So I'm saying, they may have some long life or short life, maybe not quite pure cobalt 60. So you need to double check, we do this monthly. And sometimes this may be mechanical mechanism, it's not quite good, not quite to the position, so the output may be not quite good. So you do this monthly. Okay. Okay, this is car control also, so right after your commissioning, before you start the treatment, you need to do this. That's why we call, you need to do this prior to clinical use. So this program is not say, oh, after we treatment, oh, this new machine, the first year, that's the first year new car, sometimes they don't do tests. Is that right? This is a new car, it shouldn't have any problem. No, for your treatment, runs. You start the treatment, before the first treatment, you need to set up this, okay? And then sometimes you have a change, sometimes you add the new equipment, sometimes new, add the new, uh, the, 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 the capability, and sometimes uh, maybe you need to replace the, the part, some important part, maybe like an chamber, you're broken, you need to redo the scanning, all things again. So sometimes you have a major repairment, you have something that you expect, or you anticipate maybe something going wrong, then you need to do check again, okay? This is including this. Okay, give you an example, right? This is a new machine, virtual machine for us. So after we come, uh, acceptance test, did on this day, we start doing this, uh, we set up this program, 
we do this consistent check. We want to make sure this machine is according to whatever uh, the performance is what we want to, to do, okay? So we do this consistent check for the output, uh, including both photon and the electron output. We did it almost a month already before give the machine for daily treatment. Make sure this is consistent. You still can see it's kind of drift a little bit, see? If you care for it. So we set up the new, new baseline for them to start. See what I'm saying? Can you see it? You, you're not getting get a straight line. You're, you're getting this every day. It's, we call the drifting. Huh. See what I'm saying? It's a dynamic wedge. This is including the wedge. See, this is, this is the wedge. It's, it's not quite stable. We kind of, what we call monitor this. We are not, we're not really using this machine because it's not good. <laughs> okay, but this one, we decide to use then, okay? So, but we decide to use them, but we give the new baseline. We're not quite satisfied with the machine, but for some reason, this is not up to our spec, okay? But we have to use it, like I said, from the beginning. So the machine team has to explain this. Anyway, but you need to do this. You need to check. This is part of your team. So right, uh, right after we accept the machine, hopefully your management team has been convinced that they allow you to do another week or even a month without treating any patient. That's wasting money. See what I'm saying? A lot of you, when you go back, you may have this. <laughs> right, I say, oh, they say, we have the machine, we can treat the patient tomorrow. So no, 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 I want one month to do commissioning. One month? No. You have only one week or maybe one day to do your commissioning. <laughs> when you go back, this is probably the face so you need to somehow, before you buy the machine, before you're doing this, you have to talk to your management team. You need one month to do commissioning, to generate all this table for you, and to make sure this is consistent. This has been one month for us. But we set up this program, okay? I don't really have time, we have to quick, okay? When you set up this, you can see this kind of drifting, okay? Uh, I talk about you have to have the radiation therapist or radiation technology to do this every day. Then you have this statistic, you have this random error, you have this setup error. You have to generate like a 95%. Last lecture we're talking about. Uh, I don't know you have time to really do this uh, very quick. Okay, basically this is what the measurement you're going to make. This may be the standardized measurement, but you are not going to measure this number every time. Okay, you usually you measure in this one standard deviation, which is very normal. But but when you generate this uh, daily check for people to do it, it's not usually it's not yourself, someone else. So so you have to give this two standard deviation <coughs> inside that window. You can accept this machine kind of temporarily. Okay, you don't want to trigger this alarm all the time. See what I'm saying? So only like outside this 95% the window, you trigger the alarm, okay? So, uh, so usually this is the window we accept the machine. That's why the physics has to be responsible to check the machine within five days. If you do see this outside this one step division, it's like between one and two all the time, that means your output may be dripped. Maybe you need to redo your calibration, make sure you bring this back. See what I'm saying? But if, if for this particular day, if you're outside this four standard division, which is impossible, then for that particular day, this particular machine is not allowed to treat the patient until physics check. See what I'm saying? Okay? So you need to set up this window, first action window. Uh, so this is called the action level, okay? What is accepted, what is you need to take action. Uh, and this is the, the machine we use for MD Anderson. We, we're still using also voltage, okay? And this is a very old machine, maybe 30 years. It's, it's, it was there when I first went there. It's still working. So that's the good thing for the also voltage, 30 years still using. Nineneck usually 
12, 15 years, you have to get a new one. This, okay. So, uh, so this is also very machine. We're still using it. There's a one time this uh, machine left on after the treatment because we don't do this very often. Sometimes they leave on. Say, oh, there's a patient maybe come for treatment. They leave on, but then after physician talk to the patient, patient refuse the treatment, then they leave on. Nobody turn off. By the time when the physicist doing the, the checks, oh, the machine is on. He was kind of upset, so he leave this note over there. Okay, this is the console console. <laughs> okay, so we're still using this for the treatment. And uh, he, uh, this doing all the treatment, this, the, where is the, this will be replaced actually by the end of this year. We're, going, we're still going to buy, they've been back and forth, okay, back and, because there's no spare part for this machine. <laughs> Uh, so it's a lot of people don't want to use, but some physicians still like to use this. So eventually, just last year, the management team decided we're going to buy new also virtual machines. So our team is going to to commission this next year. Okay, in order to make sure this uh, check, we call the monthly check done by the other physicist, he is very careful. He make this we call the jig, this like a fixed gas fixture, okay, to attach the machine. So his chamber will be at the same location every time he makes the measurement, quickly and easily, okay? He makes this, and he makes sure we do this. And then this is the check we monitored, okay? So this is for the beam, and then it's very consistent, very consistent for the different energy, with the different filter, okay? And this is a part of important thing, your quality assurance program is not just for the measurement, it's to monitor the trend. Okay, monitor the trend. See whether there's a, a system functioning. Okay, this is where the uh, one standard deviation window, I'm showing you, uh, this is still very consistent. I'm sorry, this is two standard deviation window. And then there's the one thing he showed me. He asked me whether we saw the change, the output, okay? This is starting doing, we will have this, uh, like a fluctuation, like a statistical, but he, he suspect that the machine maybe have an output drifting because he used some uh, regression analysis, whatever, okay? And to find out they may have a, like a straight line. He thinks there's a something after 10 years, something going on. Oh, too fast. Uh, it's hard to say. He believes because we are using so long, there's maybe the target, there's some metal fall off in the, inside the tube, so make the system, make the bin a little bit harder. Okay, that's his uh, Maybe he gets some literature. So anyway, we decide, we, we decide just still using the same output. Okay, we think this is really not important. At least our couple machine, it's very old machine also. We are not using for patient treatment now, okay? All couple treatment has been replaced by 6MV and 4MV. But this machine is still used for, for experimental therapy, for, for the research purpose. We're still using it, okay? And this is the couple I just talked about. I'll give you that the decay table. That's for this machine. Okay, another thing I'm going to talk to you is this uh, COBOL 60. Uh, usually, for the NINEC, we do daily check, okay? For the COBOL, because after a while, we think it's really stable, so we are doing weekly. We ask them to do weekly check. And this is the number, this is the window based on the first sheet I show you, is that right? And so we do weekly. So you need to base on your machine. Like a variant machine, there's a one time we do week, weekly check because it's very consistent, okay? And then this is the COBO unit that I developed where I do the monthly check, okay? This is where, based on your literature review, this is what you're going to do. You need to generate this table, this worksheet for you to do your work every day. Not every day, every month or, or something. This is where you summarize based on whatever the ledger you have. As you can see, when I first described, I was asking for three millimeter for the ODI for the light field. For my, this may be 15, 10 years ago, this is required. But I did write down, I measured for this particular day, for this particular day, I measured at two millimeter, two meter. This still meet the most current regulation or the recommendation. 
okay? But you need to generate this form. This is your form to do, okay? And this is the output. Do the output to check. Make sure the ratio here is good within certain window limit, okay? Since this is my machine, I know what's the windows, and I never measure something different from 1%, okay? And then this is for the COBOL. That's the monthly check, you know, the weekly, monthly, and this is annual check. You can get all this information, all this specification, all this action level I talk about uh, from literature, and you need to keep update to you. Just like the form I have, I have a three millimeter, but right now, since a new regulation come out, it's a new quality assurance program uh, the, that everybody accepted, I need to change my form from three millimeter to two millimeter. Remember? You, talk, you know what I'm talking about? Okay, so all this has to be, you can get this information. All this you can get for the annual test. And this is now called the NINEC now. This is the NINEC done every day. Uh, I'm using APM task group. That's what we are follow this task group uh, report. And this is what the requirement for different technique, for different type of the machine that you're going to use. So it depends on whether you have an MRT machine or not, I'm not an MRT machine that you need to set up this. I have to do real quick. So this is monthly check by the physics. You need to, based on this requirement, based on this, what we call recommendation or regulation, then you need to set up your own program. This is your worksheet, okay? You need to set up. You cannot just, every time you do, you go back to this literature, okay? You need to set up this. What are you going to do? Each item, deep blank, this yellow is how you're going to make the measurement. This is the output the measurement. We, you need to set up how you do the different build up. What is the most uh, time uh, efficient manner to do all this measurement for the full time machine, for the edge machine, for the range. And then you put this action level for yourself to double check. And this is the setup. All this form you need to establish for you or for someone to do this monthly check. Okay? If if you are the first person, okay. And then it, when we have the new machine, this origin is no OBI, add a new OBI, then you need to add a new test. This is just part of the test. I don't really have time to really show you. Uh, then you do additional quality control. This is just, if the machine running smoothly, no problem, no repair, no changing, and you just use that form. But sometimes you have this significant repair, Sometimes you have like part replacement, you have to make some significant adjustment or you add some new procedure, then you still need to add on, keep add on. Okay, keep add on. So this is the add on for me to do, we call the total skin irradiation. This machine, we add a new procedure for the total skin electron irradiation, then we need to set up this new table to do total skin, okay? Check before treatment. Then we do preventive. Okay, then this is for the COBOL, give you some, uh, some example. This kind of, you check yourself whether you follow this quality assurance program. See, this is, you check, when I do the monthly check, I need to sign up here. Whether the therapist check every month, uh, every week. Is this week uh, measurement within the, certain, the action window, okay? And then we do this, we just sign up, sign up. And there's the one thing, uh, leave here, is, Regulation require us to do five year inspection from outside. There's are some people that are qualified to do this five year inspection. This is required by regulation. You do this every five years. Do you think you can remember? No, you're going to forget, okay? If you want to use more than five years. Usually after five years, you need to do the source replacement. But if you still want to use it, I don't know your country, then for us, you need to do this kind. So this kind of just like a reminder for us what you need to do so you don't forget. This is just to give you an example, okay? I don't think I have time to do this. Uh, my time is up. Uh, so basically, the, the take home message is this. You need to set up program, you need to do this every day. A lot of dirty work, but important, you need to get everybody involved, not just yourself. The person knows how to do this, do it correctly. You need to let the top level know what you're doing is good for the treatment. Even though you do all these things behind the scenes after patient treatment, okay?